Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder. Welcome to Ask Skill Builder, which is our little strand where we answer the questions that you send us in. If you've got a problem with a house, you've got a problem with anything building related and you need help, whether you're doing the job yourself or getting somebody else to do it and you just want a second opinion, please send in your questions and we will do our best with our fantastic team to answer them. So this is Steve Coulson. Let's see what Steve Coulson's got to say. Hi Roger, uh, my name's Steve, big fan of Skill Builder. Just got a question to ask you today about my ceiling. So it's an Artec ceiling, circa 1970, so it could have asbestos in it. Bit worried about it, but yeah, you can see there it's cracked. I just wonder if I need to get this re-skimmed, uh, the whole ceiling. Um, there's another problem with the ceiling as well. So the remaining two issues, hot water cylinder leaked everywhere. This bit needs to be sorted anyway. Got lovely stains there. You can see the ceiling's actually really bowed. I don't know if you can see that very well. If you pay attention to the ceiling rows, so the, the lighting rows there, you can see how there's a big bubble that comes down. The entire ceiling is pissed. So I'm wondering what the best course of action is. Do I just get this re-skimmed or... Uh, cheers, Roger. Thanks very much. Artex. What a horrible product, really. You know, it. I mean, it overcomes a few problems like cracks, but creates other problems. And, and that just does not look nice. I'm sorry, I, I can't warm to that at all. He's got a few bows there. Those bows are the sagging. What what they very often do now is they put in joists at 600 millimeter centers. You know, they're wider apart than they used to be. And if you try and put plasterboard across 600 centers, if it's half inch and it's in good nick and everything is fine, but if it gets a little bit damp, it starts to sag. I like 400 centers and I still like to use half inch plasterboard on 400 centers you really need that rigidity but you can see this is bowing all over the place he's had a bit of water damage from a cylinder there he's got something going on under the bath and it's sagging so there's no real chance of him having that skimmed over and making it look good it really needs ripping down and although it seems like a horrendous task to do it if he clears the room of furniture and uh, they put uh, polythene sheet up and everything else and get that whole lot down in one go again this thing about it might contain asbestos so it will need handling carefully which is just uh, what i would do is just spray it basically i just spray it with some water little hose spray dampen it all up wear the mask and everything else and then get it all into sealed polythene bags break it up into small bits that will actually go inside a, a polythene bag and then you tape the polythene bag up and then you can take it to your local waste disposal center a lot of them deal with the asbestos related products now so or just get somebody else in to do it but whatever he does i think the only way of solving this really is to put a whole new ceiling up there and i would even be tempted to put a few noggins in between the joists just to pick up the edges of the plasterboard because if it is 600 centers they do tend to sag and uh and you know you want to give it as much help as possible so yeah i'm sorry steve but that's my solution is to rip it down and start again so here we have a question from John Moller and he sent loads of pictures in here. Let's have a look at those. He's got this rented three garages in a row made of concrete sections. So what we might call a Marley garage where it all just fits together. You put a bit of gunge in between the gaps to stop it leaking. Only it is leaking. And uh, he said that there's a mechanical fixing which is used to keep the fiber cement, corrugated fiber cement roofing on, which is a standard fixing. You can buy those from somewhere like Screwfix or anywhere really. They come with a little rubber washer and those rubber washers do deteriorate in ultraviolet light and the sunlight. They do go brittle after a while. So that's clearly what's happening there and they're leaking down into roof. Now he's got a choice of either taking those off and as rusted as they are, he's got to climb up there with some boards and mess around or he could just dob a little bit of sealant over the top of the fixings, which is what I would tend to do. It's a rented property, he doesn't want to spend a fortune on it. I would go and get a tin of Acropole or something like that and I'd paint that whole roof at the same time, give each one of those fixings a nice dob of extra sealant and I think he'll be absolutely fine there. It might end up costing a hundred quid just in roof sealant, but it'll certainly keep the water out. It'll give the whole thing a new lease of life as well. I could do that. Um, and uh, he said he's also got water patches on the side of the wall. Now, this is these concrete sections. You think, oh, concrete. 
that's going to be really waterproof in actual fact the water does seem to drive through so when you've checked the gaps between the panels and check that they've got a nice run of mastic in them the only other thing you can do is to paint something on the outside on the wall just to stop the water coming through and there's any number of different external water sealants you can get if he wants to use a masonry paint then he can use a masonry paint and so long as you've got a good one with a resin in it will actually provide a fair degree of waterproofing i think he's only got damp patches there so it's not like the water's pouring in at those points so i, I think a masonry paint would brighten the whole thing up and he also said the water creeps in at the base as well now again what they used to do is cast the slab and then build these these marley garages straight off the slab and of course that was always a weak point and what he's saying is could he just put a a little steep fillet if you like at the bottom of the wall just to shed the water away i think that'd be absolutely ideal that would be the thing i would do if um there's no way you're going to lift that garage and start putting a membrane in there underneath so the best thing to do is get yourself some waterproofer get yourself a nice bit of uh, sand and cement and just create a little triangular fillet there uh, use a bit of sbr in it because the sbr will really help it stick to the existing concrete and uh, stop it cracking as well so a bit of SBR in the uh, mix water with um, I would use a sharp sand a screeding sand and some cement possibly something like a four to one mix with a bit of SBR and just create a nice little neat fillet along the bottom there and I think that's as good as you can get it's a question of what you spend if it's a rented property you really don't want to spend that much money doing up somebody else's garage but there you go that's uh, a quick fix i think would be my description for that john okay so next question comes from chris hansen and he wants to put a retaining wall up at the end of his garden tidy it all up a bit and he's wondering about drainage for that retaining wall and he's quite right to worry about drainage because uh, if water builds up behind a retaining wall it can push it over what he's saying is should he use perforated pipe along the bottom of it to to drain it that's a very good idea There's nothing wrong with that bit of perforated pipe a little bit of geotextile over the top of it just that's that gauze that stops the weeds growing through and that will stop it silting up and it means that the water can get through but all the earth won't start filling up the perforated pipe and then a bit of gravel on top of that to allow the the land to drain and then they say where should he take it to should he take it to a soak away he's got a lot of clay around there well quite honestly a soak away is not going to do you much good at all really in that situation because clay it just holds the water i've dug soak aways in in gardens with clay before and when it rains you just watch them fill up they take days and days to empty out so He's got a bit of a copse there. We can't see what else is going on at the bottom, but it's a bit of a woodland area at the bottom. And what I would suggest is that that's lower than his garden. And that what he ought to do is just put some holes in the bottom of the wall, set some pipes in there while he's building the wall so that that water will drain out through those holes and, and into the copse. And uh, it'll make those trees grow. It'll be fine at some... Um, passing on your your rainwater to to a good cause really so yeah that's what i do don't bother about soak away so here's a little link here uh, in the description where you can where you can have a look at what somebody else has done in the way of retaining wall and a bit of drainage that's the product but you could there are variations on the theme basically now this is from Hazem Zoni. Now Hazem is going to be using Elements Board. This is not sponsored by the way, so those people don't jump out your pram and say, oh, we ought to declare a sponsor. It's not sponsored. He's watched the videos. He's decided he wants to use Elements Board. He's sold on the idea of it, but he doesn't want to use it around the whole bathroom. He's going to use moisture resistant plasterboard on some of it to save the cost, but he's going to use Elements Board on the wet areas. Highly sensible, Hazem. That's the way to go. So his question is, he doesn't want to plaster the plasterboard and that's very good. You shouldn't really plaster moisture resistant plasterboard because all it does is creates a weak skin between the plasterboard and whatever you're putting on it. So um, he's gonna tape and joint that and he what he's worried about is he said the, the elements board is 12 millimeters thick and the plasterboard is 12 and a half millimeters thick. And he said, what do, we, what do I do about that step? that little step of half a millimeter the answer is has then you won't notice it when when you tape and joint it when you put your joining filler and your tape over between those two you won't notice that little bit of step what i would do if i were you 
is I would get some ready mix polymer plaster which is not a gypsum based plaster it's more like a very thick paint and you can get it from screw fix and places like that and you can put that on with a filling knife just down the joint and then when it dries you can give it a very light rub over and then give it another coat and uh, and you will get an absolutely smooth joint and it will taper that half millimeter you won't see because it'll be tapered over a, a broader area um, it'll be perfectly all right but when he said he wants to dot and dab some some of the elements board as well well if you're dot and dabbing it he's going to be using a bit of tile adhesive to make some dobs up to just push the elements board against the wall if you do that then as you push it you can just make sure get yourself a straight edge and make sure that it comes absolutely flush with the plasterboard anyway so so i don't think you'll end up with that step if you're going to dot and dab it but if you weren't dot dabbing it and you had that little jump if you like between the two boards very easy to overcome so this one's from michael hansen he's just bought this lovely property and he said in the loft he's got these strange vertical boards that go up and and attach the the side of the ridge and he said he doesn't believe they're in any way structural and he wants to take them out and put down some floor for storage they're there for a reason why did somebody put those there i was a bit thinking about this i'm looking at a picture and i'm thinking okay they can't support the ridge the ridge is supported by the rafters there's nothing going on there and then i thought what they're probably doing is that they've hung them down to support the floor to take some of the bounce out from the floor because very often all you've got is a, a four by two bit of joist going through there which is not really made for walking around on it's not really made for taking much load you can put you know christmas decorations suitcases a few other bits and pieces but you do see people overloading their loft floors quite a lot and uh, i think maybe what somebody had done there is they sort of use those vertical timbers to strap the floor joists up to stop any deflection in the floor joists uh, maybe they've even taken a wall down underneath that in in a bedroom or somewhere or a bathroom and they just wanted to give it a little bit of support take the whip out so if, if he's sure that if he takes those off i mean take them off anyway because they won't you can easily put them back again you know but take them off and just see how much bounce there is in those floor joists uh, when those braces have, have been taken away just sort of stand on it and, and see if it flexes at all and if it does you need to think about something else maybe putting a bit of osb along the side of those uh, those ceiling joists gluing and screwing it to stiffen them slightly that works quite well it turns it into a kind of an engineered joist if you like um, so that would solve that problem the other thing he's looking at is he's got all this what he calls mortar cement um concrete between the tiles which is just hanging there now this is called torching and i had this in my house it's really just there to stop any wind-blown snow or excessive draft blowing up under the tiles it was quite a laborious process because they did it with sand and lime and they just went along with mortar laid each row of tiles went along with mortar and then just dobbed this on the head of the next set of tiles so that they would basically bedding the tiles on this sand and lime mortar all the way up and a hell of a thing and of course it just crumbles and it makes such a mess it doesn't do a great deal of good so i've now renewed my roof and it's got a membrane in there and the whole thing is is a lot more windproof than that but all the time it was there it doesn't do any harm i, I would reckon that house is a hundred years old and he's had good ventilation in there it hasn't rotted any of the timbers the battens still look all right if it's a mess and it will be a mess because it'd be dropping down on whatever you want to put in the loft what i would tend to do is get something like some building paper or some kind of foil membrane the cheap stuff that you can buy rolls of the bubble it's got bubbles it's like bubble wrap stuff but it's silver foil and just staple that across the insides of the joist all the way across and uh, it'll tidy it up brighten it up and it'll still allow you know ventilation through there because that roof hasn't got a membrane on the underside it, it there will be loads of ventilation in there so he won't be in a situation where he's he's cut off the ventilation but that isn't doing any harm at all that torching you don't need to get rid of it when you renew the roof if you renew the roof at some point in the future then it'll all go anyway 
And this is one from Phil Carr. He's an American. He says he's married to a girl from Derby. He's got this problem with water hammer. What he said is he's got a new water heater fitted and, and he's put a recirculating pump on it, which means that you've got continuous hot water at the point. So you don't have to wait for that hot water at the taps. It comes on, but he only runs that for a certain time during the day on a timer. And when it switches off at night and they go into the bathroom and they flush the loo or whatever, they get a, a minor bit of water hammer. So he's put these little water hammer arresters, these Sioux Chiefs. Haven't seen those for a while, fun enough, but I know the ones there. What we call a hydro pneumatic accumulator. And what they do is they take that shock wave out. Because water isn't compressible, if you've got water running along a pipe and you turn off a tap, especially with these quarter turn ceramic disc taps that we have now, when you turn that tap off, that water water's running along that pipe and it suddenly stops and you hear a donk and it can sound quite alarming it can actually sound like somebody's hitting the pipe with a hammer he said the flexible pipes flex when when the taps are turned on and off well that would happen because that water is going up into that little hydro pneumatic accumulator and it's, it's pushing against the shock absorber if you like as isaac newton said for every action there is an opposite and equal reaction so i'm not clear why when he's got this recirculating pump on he's not getting any water hammer and yet when he turns it off he is that would suggest it was on the hot supply rather than on the cold supply that he's getting the problem and if he's got an unvented cylinder i can't really see why that would happen you normally have an expansion vessel on the unvented cylinder and that takes care of that little bit of water hammer that bit of shock now if he's in america i know he said he's married to a girl from derby but I, what i can't make out is whether the girl from derby has moved to america or whether he's moved to derby and it looks like the fittings he's showing in the photographs are american fittings so it all looks like it says faucet there you know which a uh, bit of a giveaway i don't know why you're getting water hammer when you turn that pump off unless you've got an American system that doesn't have an expansion vessel on the unvented cylinder. Maybe there's a non-return valve in that pump section. That would make sense. And that when the pump's turned off, that non-return valve is closed and that's causing that little bit of a, a jolt because the basically it's got nowhere to go so i think that's possibly the reason is it's just it's just closing against that that non-return valve but what i'd like to see is a lot more drawings on that but it 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 doesn't sound horrendous and it would be solved if he put in a slightly larger mini arrestor those ones he's got there are tiny and you can get one you can get one which is a, the size of a football i'm talking about an english football not an american football by the way so if you get one the size of a soccer ball it would certainly take out any of that that water hammer good luck to you and uh, thanks for all the nice things you said about the channel. I really appreciate those. I won't read them out because they're, they're, they're a bit embarrassing, really. And it's, they're lavish. He's lavishing praise upon, upon our channel to us not to ever stop doing what we, what we do. And I'm thinking, well, that's not really under our control, is it?